So when we eat food, we get a lot of different macromolecules that are necessary for us to live from that food. We get things like proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and what allows us to do that is the digestive system. And in this video, I would like to talk about the digestive system and the different parts that it has and, and sort of the functions. So the first thing we do when we eat food is we put it in our mouth. So it's going to start and enter in right through here, and this is going to be called the oral cavity. An oral cavity is just simply the mouth, and inside the mouth, this is where we're obviously going to chew our food. A lot of mechanical digestion is what it's going to be called, and oftentimes you'll hear mastication. So chewing, and what chewing does is it breaks large pieces of food into smaller pieces and makes it much easier for our system to digest as it moves throughout the whole digestive GI tract. So another thing that's going to happen in here is there's three salivary glands. This one's called the parotid. And all these salivary glands are going to release what we like to call salivary amylase. And that's where our carbohydrates are starting to be broken down. So the next one down here under the tongue is called sublingual, which makes sense, just under the tongue. And then the last one is going to be right here is going to be called submandibular. Submandibular. So, which makes sense because it's just under the mandible. So, after that, after it's mixed with all the enzymes and the chewing and the mastication, what's going to be left is going to be a bolus. That's just the food that entered. It's now referred to as a bolus so it's going to be right about here and this bolus is going to move down to the next part of the digestive system and that is going to be called the esophagus so the bolus is now going to enter the esophagus and the esophagus is not too exciting the only thing that happens here is it's going to be sort of a passageway that pushes food onto the stomach eventually, but it does this through a process called peristalsis. And that's a, and you'll hear that a lot in anatomy and physiology classes. And all that is is a series of muscular contractions that moves and propels the bolus down onto the next part of the digestive system. And the next part of the digestive system is right here. It's going to be called the stomach. And the stomach is where a lot of sort of the action starts to pick up. So inside the stomach, we're going to have a lot of different things being released. We'll have hydrochloric acid being released. We'll also have pepsin, and pepsin assists in the breakdown of proteins. And also an important thing to note, hydrochloric acid, of course, is a very strong acid, so the pH inside the stomach is going to be around one, which is extremely acidic. And a question a lot of people have is, well, hey, if the pH is so high and it's releasing this, very acidic acid, why doesn't it start to break itself down? Well, it releases a mucus that protects itself, which is very important. So in addition to that, inside the stomach, there's going to be a lot of different folds. These folds are going to be called rugae. And the rugae, really, same sort of mechanical digestion that we saw in the mouth earlier. The rugae are going to keep turning over the food. You can think of it as sort of a cement mixer. It's going to keep turning it over, and the end result is it's going to produce chyme. So it started as a bolus, now leaving the stomach is chyme. So it's going to exit out of the stomach after it comes down into the small intestine. So the small intestine is going to start right about here, where I'm coloring in yellow. It's going to end right here. So it gets pretty, pretty windy in there. Let's go ahead and I'll draw it over here so you can see better what's happening. So here's the, the stomach. It's going to come around. It's going to empty into the small intestine. And the small intestine has three parts. I'll draw it this way so it's not as convoluted for you. So there it is, small intestine. And the three parts, we'll label them now. It starts up here. This is the duodenum. This is where a lot of different enzymes are dumped into from the accessory organs. The accessory organs are the liver, the pancreas, and the gallbladder. We'll get into those in following videos. So the next part, sort of the middle part, is the jejunum. And then the last part is going to be the ileum. 
In the small intestine's a very important place. This is where 90% of all nutrients are absorbed. So 90% of nutrients. And it's able to do this because it increases its surface area through, I'll take a zoomed in picture up here. It's able to do this through villi and microvilli. So this is what it would look like, these finger-like projections. So these would be called the villi right here. And it'll have little projections on top of the finger-like projections over here. And this will be microvilli. So really, I like to think of it as sort of like a towel. So you think of a towel, it wouldn't be very good at absorbing water if it were just a flat piece of cardboard or something. It has all these little finger-like projections hanging off it. That's what villi and microvilli are kind of like. And really, the inside is supposedly feels like velvet. So that gives you an idea of how much villi and microvilli are hanging off it. So from there, all the things that we talked about, the macromolecules earlier, the proteins, lipids, carbs, they're absorbed in the small intestine. And they move on to the next part, which is the large intestine. So the large intestine is going to start right about here, where I'm coming from, and ends right here. So we'll take a, a closer look over here. I'll draw it for you. So it's going to have a few parts. It's going to come up like this, come over, come down, across, and then down a little bit. So I'll label the different parts for you right here. So first things first is right here, the part where the small intestine enters the large intestine, right about there. That's going to be called the cecum. And the small intestine enters it through the ileocecal valve, which makes sense because remember the last part of the small intestine is the ileum. It's going to go to the cecum, so ileocecal. And then another thing, if you're wondering what this little guy right here is, this is the appendix. And not much is known about the function of the appendix, but we think that it may have some immune function. So parts of the large intestine, really this, what's going to happen here is a lot of water absorption. And then also, it's sort of like a drying station. And there's a lot of bacteria that lives in the large intestine. And this is going to produce things like vitamin K and B. And vitamin K just assists in the coagulation or blood clotting mechanism. And then B is obviously very important for a lot of biochemical functions and metabolic functions. So let's label the different parts of the large intestine. So remember, our chyme passed through our small intestine, entered through the ileocecal valve. Now it's going to enter into the ascending. We'll write that here. So ascending. And then up here is going to be the transverse. Colon. And then down here is descending. And then this is going to be the sigmoid. So those are the four parts. And like I said, this is sort of a drying station. Whatever matter is left, it's going to be compacted and sort of become fecal matter in here. And this is where it's going to be stored. And your fecal matter is going to move down. Eventually, it's going to end up in the last part, which is what I like to point out. This is the rectum. And then eventually this right here is the anus. And the food will be stored in the rectum until your body deems it an appropriate time to get rid of it. And then the anus is where the food and waste passes out of. So that's a big picture of the digestive system. And really we went through all the major organs and major parts of it. So in the next video we can take a look at the villi and microvilli and see how our digestive system actually absorbs the different macromolecules, different carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins.